Thanks everyone uh, for joining us today. I know the experience is a little different than our normal experience together here at, at Grace Church, but uh, this is, in our minds, the next best thing from uh, being physically present. We can still be present uh, with each other in, in a, a different kind of way. And so today we are uh, doing our church at home experience, and uh, here uh, we're going to uh, do this part, and then at 11 o'clock, uh, Pastor Paul is going to uh, offer uh, Kids Church in your, your PJs, and that's going to be on Grace Church's Facebook uh, page. That's where you can access it, and uh, that is at uh, facebook.com slash Grace Kutztown, and uh, it's an opportunity you won't want to miss, whether you have kids or, or you don't. And so for those of, of you who know some people who, who might not have internet access, we are going to make this available on CD, and, and we're going to be distributing uh, the CDs to some of those folks uh, as well. Also, uh, if you'd like prayer, uh, there's an option uh, for that for those of you who are watching uh, from your homes. And also, if you'd like, you can take this message and forward it. Uh, to folks who might find it uh, a blessing uh, in these days. And so you can do that via YouTube uh, in a little while. Uh, we're going to be sure to make that shareable uh, for uh, your, your friends and family members who, who might, as I said, need a little bit of, of hope. Uh, but we're together today uh, to worship uh, Jesus. In fact, in times like these, one of the best things we can do is to, uh, to put our eyes and our hearts onto uh, our God who's, who's never failed us once. And so our worship team is going to help us to do that as they lead us in a few songs this, uh, this morning. Our call to worship this morning today is out of Psalm 27. Starting in verse 13, it says this. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Heavenly Father, God, that's our prayer today. God, that we will remain confident in the goodness of you, our Lord and Savior. God, as we worship this morning, God, as your church scattered, we pray that we would gather and unite under your name. God, we pray this in your son's name. you I worship you you are here you're working in this place I worship you I worship you you are here you're moving in our midst I worship you I worship you. You are here. You're working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Cause you are the maker, miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are we make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my God that is who you are you are here and you're touching every heart I worship you I worship you you are here and you're healing every heart I worship you, I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, and you're mending every heart. I worship you, I worship you. Oh, 
you are, that is who 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 you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, even when I don't feel it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Stop working, even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. That is who you are, Lord. You are the way. darkness, my God, that is who you are, as you are, we make miracle work, darkness keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, as you are, we make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Amen. In keeping up with understanding why we sing what we sing, I'd like to share with you this story behind the song, Be Thou My Vision. See, the story of Be Thou My Vision is this. It goes back to only one missionary who's honored with a holiday, and that is St. Patrick. The story of St. Patrick starts when he was a little boy, and his name wasn't St. Patrick, of course. His name was Maywin Suckett. He was born in 373 along the banks of the River Clyde in what is now Scotland. His father was a deacon and his grandfather a priest. When Patrick was a young boy, raiders descended upon his little town and torched his home. When the pirates spotted him in the bushes, they seized him and hauled him aboard the ship and took him to Ireland as a slave. There he gave his life to the Lord Jesus. The Lord opened my mind to an awareness of my unbelief, he later wrote, in order that I might remember my transgressions and turn with all my heart to the Lord my God. Maywin Suckett eventually escaped and returned home. His overjoyed family begged him to never leave again. But one night in a dream reminiscent of Paul's vision of the Macedonian man in Acts 16, Patrick saw an Irishman pleading with him to come back and evangelize Ireland. It wasn't an easy decision, nor a quick one. But about 30, he returned to his former captors with only one book, the Latin Bible in his hand. He evangelized in the countryside and multitudes came to listen. 
the superstitious Druids opposed him and sought his death. But his preaching was powerful, and Patrick became one of the most fruitful evangelists of all time, planting over 200 churches and baptizing over 100,000 converts. His work endured, and several centuries later, the Irish church was still producing hymns, prayers, sermons, and songs of worship. And out of that fruitfulness comes this song, Be Thou My Vision. In 1905, Mary Elizabeth Byrne, a scholar in Dublin, Ireland, translated this ancient Irish poem into English. That is why we sing what we're singing this morning. our prayer. God, even in the midst of everything going on, everything going on immediately around us, everything going on in this world, God, that our vision would be you. God, you would be in the forefront. God, you'd be first and foremost. God, for you are the ruler of all. In your son's name we pray. Amen. For those of you who are uh, a regular part of the the Grace Church family, uh, you'll notice that this morning our our time in, in the Bible is going to be a little different than where we've been uh, the last few weeks, and that's because I, in the midst of all that has been going on around us, 
And as I've been praying about it, uh, I've sensed God uh, moving us in a, a different direction, at least for the, the time being. And so this morning, you'll uh, note that we're in the book of Psalms instead. And uh, instead of the New Testament, we're back in the Old Testament. And I think that uh, it's a message that all of us can use no matter where we're at. I also realize that there are some of you who are uh, participating with us today who uh, are not normally a part of the Grace Church family, and it's because your church is not meeting for uh, obvious reasons, and and, and perhaps they're not online. Uh, For others of you, you're joining us uh, because you've been wanting to check out Grace Church and uh, haven't had the opportunity, and still for others, uh, it's it's, uh, that you're looking for a little bit of hope, and you're hoping... Uh, perhaps to find it here. And, and that's my prayer for all of us, that, that we would find that, that hope together today. And so I start with a question, and it's simple. Have you ever felt super intimidated by a situation that you had to go through in life? Uh, maybe for you, it was when uh, you were dealing with the, the first day of, of kindergarten or the first day of high school. Maybe you're in a different place in life. It was the, the first day on the job or the first day uh, living out on your own when you, you finally uh, moved out. Or maybe for you, it's when you asked your spouse to marry you or when you uh, brought home that first baby and you thought, what in the world have we gotten ourselves into? Still, maybe for you, it was uh, when you... Uh, signed on that first house, or entered into a new season of life. The fact of the matter is, we face some scary things in in life. That fear is a a very real challenge we we deal with in in many different ways. And the fact of the matter is, some of you are facing fear right now. That we live in a world that's full of uncertainty, and uh, there are a lot of people around us that are fearful about uh, COVID-19, the, the coronavirus. We have those who are fearful for those or on behalf of those who are most vulnerable to it. We have people who are fearful in, in how you're going to take care of your kids over the next few weeks while they're out of school. And still for others, you're fearful about missed time at work or missed wages or maybe something altogether different but still related in, in some way. There's all kinds of stuff in life that causes us to be fearful. Our fears take on so many different forms and affect our lives in so many different ways, and yet they're so personal and they're so real. There's a problem with fear, and it's this, that whatever you and I fear, it actually can paralyze us and keep us from experiencing everything that God wants for us. And God knew, and I take comfort in this, that we would struggle with with fear Uh, Because the most often given command throughout the entire Bible, from the beginning of the Bible in the book of Genesis to the end of the Bible in the book of Revelation, is is this this command to fear not, not to be afraid. It's uh, a command given some 366 different times in in the Bible. A, A reminder, if you will, for every day of the year. Makes you wonder, why does God spend so much time talking about being fearless, it's, I think, because he knows how easily we can slip into fear, especially when our circumstances are as chaotic as they are. And that's why I think today's message is so helpful for all of us, no matter how old we are, no matter where we're at in life's journey, no matter where we are in our faith, this, this is helpful stuff. Because it answers the question, so how do we deal with those situations in life that do make us fearful? How do we walk through the dark places of life when we're not sure what the way out looks like or or where it's at? And is there something that we might be missing to give us the hope that we're desperate for? Is there any way we can not only survive the times that we're living in, but actually thrive in spite of them and be fearless? And so today's message is a a personal one and a practical one, because this particular psalm we're going to look at, Psalm 27, is a personal and, and practical piece of of God's truth. And so if you have your Bible, you can follow with me. For those of you who are are, are, are viewing online, you can follow along uh, on the screen. But David is the writer of this psalm, and he's a guy who faced his own share of, of scary times. And here's what he says in the first few verses of, of Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You got to admit, he, he sounds pretty confident, right? And look at what he's up against. He, he says, when evil men 
advance against me to devour my flesh. When my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. As David looks around him, what does he see? He sees evil guys advancing. He sees enemies attacking. He sees armies encroaching on him, war breaking out all around him. And it makes us think of our own experiences like that, that evoke similar emotions. Have you ever had one of those situations in life when it seems like all of your circumstances and even maybe the people around you are against you? That we live in this reality in the world around us that, that there's a world of tension and tears, of, of things like depression and disappointment and despair, a world where there is debilitating disease, terminal diagnoses, a world of brokenness and bitterness, failure and frustration, death and destruction. We look at all these things, and if we focus on them, it can become pretty ugly within us pretty quickly. And yet we have, even in the New Testament, Jesus' reminder for us that in this world, we're going to have trouble. That to live is to have to deal with scary stuff, uncertain situations. And that's the reality that David lays out throughout uh, Psalm 27. We see it in verses 2 and 3, even later in verses 10 and 12. It's this reminder that bad stuff is going to happen. And sometimes we think that God should keep us from all the scary stuff. And that's for followers of Jesus. If we follow him closely enough, then God should somehow shield us from that, from the pain, from the suffering, from the uncertainty. But we have to admit that it didn't really work that way for David. And if we would keep reading the scriptures and read into the New Testament, it didn't work that way for Jesus either. And as you've experienced in your own life and as I've experienced it in mine, it really doesn't work that way for any of us. That the idea that good things only happen to good people and bad things only happen to bad people is not really something that God communicates throughout the scriptures. That we actually, when bad things do happen, we need a better perspective. And what's the better perspective? That's what David talks about as he, he continues on, right? Because if you're following, he, he says that one thing I ask of the Lord, that this is what I seek. Keep in mind that this is the one thing that David is after when life is difficult for him, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to see him in his temple. Notice the one thing David is after when life is out of control is not for him to be taken out of the tough situation or the season of darkness or the challenge at hand. No, he says, the one thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Friends, when, when David was in trouble, David wanted God. And notice the kind of confidence that David has. He says, for in the day of trouble, he, that is God, will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle, that is, in his presence. And he will set me high upon a rock. And then he says, then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. Friends, what if you and I had that perspective in our times of, of suffering and and uncertainty? What if we had that perspective even as we deal with the uncertainty that's happening all around us? It's personal and practical truth. And, and here's what we learn about God here, that God was in complete control of David's circumstances, even the worst one, and God is in control, complete control, of your circumstances and my circumstances, even the worst ones. And because of that reality, you and I can do what David did. And here's what he did, verse 6. At his sacred tent will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. That when we get the right perspective, our lives are going to radiate the good that God is, no matter what's going on around us. That we don't need to be frozen in fear. We actually can live fearlessly faithful to God. And that's what the people around us need. That's what we ourselves need, that all these things, they draw our, our mind's attention and our heart's affection back to all that God is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in the world around us, there are people who are, are struggling, even 
uh, more significantly than, than we are. And they need that hope that comes from Jesus. See, this is our perspective. Bad stuff, it's going to happen. But God is going to be there with us. That nothing happens in your life or my life that catches God off guard. That there's never a single moment of time when God is, is scrambling, trying to figure out how to respond to the thing that you and I are dealing with in the circumstances that we're facing right now. That you and I can live confidently every day. You and I can live fearlessly every day knowing that nothing is out of God's control. There's nothing that God does not know about, nothing that God doesn't have the power for, that we love and we serve a God who's in complete control, and he's never failed us a single time. But this is where David found his confidence. This is where David found his hope. This is where David became fearless. How about you? And how about me? No matter what, we have God, Father, Son, and spirit, that this is where the rubber beats the road. Though we may lose our health, though we may lose our wealth, though we may lose things that are very valuable to us at the end of it all, for those of us who have put our hope in Jesus, we have Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, that he is more than enough for everything we could ever possibly need, that that's the hope that we have, that the presence of Jesus in our lives is the absence of fear, and maybe you're hearing this today and, and maybe the presence of Jesus isn't all that real in your life for a variety of reasons. I think it begs the question, have you put your hope completely in Jesus? And if not, will you allow him to give you the hope that you need as you put your hope in him and him alone? Because every day of our lives, we're faced with this reality that we are broken people who can't possibly fix ourselves that we are broken people who can't possibly manufacture enough hope to be able to face the, the road ahead. We are broken people who can't possibly try to come up with enough wisdom to make sense of the world around us. But there's one who can and there's one who, who does. That there's one who is hope and there's one who is wisdom. And that's the beauty of, of what God communicates through his word, that God sent his son Jesus into our brokenness. He sent his son Jesus to deal with our brokenness. And though you and I are broken people who've messed up, broken people who've failed, broken people who've turned our backs on God, God's always been faithful. And only God can restore us and this world around us. That he sent Jesus to live a perfect life, a life that you and I could never measure up to. He sent Jesus to die our death in our place because that's the price of our, 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 our brokenness. That's the price of our sins against God. That someone's got to die because it needs to be dealt with. Our sin needs to be paid for. Someone would need to pay. It would be God in human flesh, the Son of God, as he went to the cross for us and he, he paid for that brokenness there. And Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose again from the dead for our victory so that we can have hope, so that we would know that as we put our hope in Jesus, that all of our brokenness is, is, is dealt with. That the moment we put our faith in Jesus, we're made whole. The moment we put our hope in Jesus, we experience hope. The moment we put our hope in Jesus, we get to, to have wisdom to try to make sense of the world around us. That it's our faith in Jesus that makes all of this possible. And maybe that's the one thing you need to do today. It's to commit your life to Jesus and experience hope. Maybe for the first time, or maybe to recommit your life to Jesus knowing that that's the place where hope is, is found. And for those of us who've trusted Jesus, maybe this is exactly what we need to hear this morning, that whatever it is you and I fear, it will not, it cannot separate us from the presence of, of Jesus. That God knows exactly where we are. God knows exactly what we're going through because he's with us, just as he was with David, as David communicates it so, so clearly and so beautifully in Psalm 27. And imagine what would happen in your life and my life if we kept this truth uh, at the front of our minds and firmly planted in our hearts, that we never, ever go through the tough stuff alone. That God is that powerful. God is that gracious. God is that present. It changes how we see our circumstances. It changes how we see the future ahead of us. And notice what else David says then, if you're, you're following with me through this part of the passage. 
David says in verse 7, Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says if you seek his face, your face, Lord, will I seek. See, friends, we need confidence. We need, we need this, this level of trust because in the middle of that bad stuff, sometimes we doubt God's love for us. I know there's been times in my life where that's happened. Sometimes when life is most difficult, we forget God's promises. I've been there too. Sometimes we wonder if God's really with us. Sometimes we struggle to believe in the dark what God has made so clear in the light. And when you and I are scared, trusting God is the the best thing that we can do. And he's proven that we can trust him completely. Even when the storm around us is so intense, we might not be able to see the way out, even when it seems like nothing good can ever come from what we're dealing with, even when it seems like in a particular situation God is silent or distant or absent altogether, even when all we can do is ask, why God? He knows these things. And he can help us to face these things. And when we get this right, it leads to what David eventually says in verse 13 of Psalm 27. If you uh, read along ahead and, and skip ahead, he says, I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. David says, God, I'm 100% confident that you are going to do this. And how do we experience that confidence? It's by waiting for the Lord, being strong and taking heart and letting God be God. See, David had this confidence because he lived in relationship with God. This whole psalm is about David's vital, life-giving relationship with God. And when we read this Old Testament passage, knowing what we know now from the New Testament, that God sent his son Jesus to to give us a hope beyond all hope, we have all the hope we need in in Jesus. And here's what it leads to. Okay, the reality that bad stuff is going to happen, the reality that God is going to be there with us, and then the confidence that is ours and the hope that comes from connecting with Christ. Bad stuff is going to happen, but God is going to be there. So be confident in the hope that comes from connecting with Christ. That Jesus gives the opportunity for us to be set free from fear. That Jesus overcame sin and death so that you and I, as we put our hope in him, we could be confident and have hope despite any fear whatsoever. It moves us to connect with Jesus. It moves us to trust him, to believe him, to lean into him, to cultivate that relationship that we have with him. This is truth we need in 2020. And this is truth that will carry us through every day of our lives. This is truth that if we apply it, will result in you and me living fearlessly. And sure, we deal with all kinds of fears, very personal, very real fears. Some of you are going through some stuff right now. Even apart from this whole COVID-19 coronavirus thing, you're going through things that, where the road is kind of dark and difficult. You're not sure what's around the corner. You're not sure how it's all going to turn out. Where in your life do you need to apply these truths today? How do these truths inform the, the, the situation you're finding yourself in and how do, maybe do you need to use these truths to prepare you for a situation that will likely come at some point in the future? And then this question, which I think is so appropriate for uh, those of us who are people of faith, people have, who have put our hope in Jesus. So how can we as people of faith point people to the only hope there is through Jesus? How can God use us to share his, his light, his love, in a world that is feeling so uncertain and so unfamiliar. And so there are a few ways for us to take some next steps today. Maybe for you it's to, to cultivate your relationship with Jesus, spend some time in the Word, uh, maybe spend some time in the book of Psalms. That's a place where there's, there's a lot of real, raw communication with God and, and a lot of truth that reminds us of, of, of who God is, his his plans, his purposes, his his capabilities. Maybe for you, it's to identify some of those areas where you're afraid and ask God to give you courage to trust him, to to be fearless. Maybe it's to memorize some of those promises so that you can 
uh, recall them easily when, when life is um, more difficult. Maybe for you it's to spend some time uh, praying through uh, certain situations, just surrendering them to God, communicating to God, telling him what's on your heart, and then allowing God to speak in. Maybe for you it's to express some of your hope to people around you. Maybe through your words, maybe through your works on their behalf as you offer some hope in a situation for many people that just seems hopeless or a situation that has a whole lot less hope than maybe the normal day-to-day life so many of us get to enjoy. There's lots of ways that we can apply this truth. I trust that God will speak to you just like he does me in helping uh, each of us to apply what he has to say, his timeless truth, to the times we live in right now, whoever we are, wherever we're at. But there's something for all of us. So I'd love for us to, wherever you are, just to uh, quiet your heart um, and to spend some time. I'd like to pray for you. Um, And I'd like to pray for the people around us. So um, feel free to close your eyes, bow your head, uh, get quiet. And let's talk to God. Father God, Today we're grateful, Um, grateful for you, grateful for your plans, grateful for your purposes. We're grateful, God, for um, your word that reminds us of who you are, your word that reminds us of of, of what you can do. God, as we we sang about, you are the way maker. You're the promise keeper. You're the light in the darkness. It's easy for us to forget, and and this is why we need to be reminded of it. Lord, help us today, no matter what it is we're going through, to be people who who are assured of your presence, but also people who who yearn for your presence, who desire your presence with us. Lord, help us to, to, whenever fear starts to make its presence known in our hearts, Lord, help us to reintroduce ourselves to the, the presence of Jesus. Your Holy Spirit, who you promise lives in every one of us as as followers of Jesus. Your Holy Spirit, who comforts us in our our difficulties, who challenges us when we allow ourselves to go astray. And Lord, as you remind us of who you are and what you're capable of, I pray that you'd ignite in our hearts a desire to be faithful to you. I pray that you'd help us to, to continue to cultivate lifestyle of of trust, of faith, of hope. And Lord, use those of us who who would identify as people of faith to introduce the hope of the world to people who need it. Through our words, for sure, but also, Lord, through our works on their behalf as we come alongside our neighbors and show compassion and care to people who desperately need it. I pray, Lord, that you would use us as your church to impact the world around us for your glory. Pray for those who uh, may be participating with us that uh, haven't really ever put their hope in Jesus. Maybe they uh, consider themselves seekers or maybe even skeptics, but for whatever reason, Lord, they're, they're sensing you working in their heart moving them to to put their hope in you. So Lord, I pray for them today um, that that they would respond to you by putting their hope in Jesus. That they would confess, Lord, their faith in you. That that Lord, as they admit their their hopelessness, their brokenness, their their sinfulness, Lord, that they would experience the power of that promise that, that says whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That they'll experience new life they'll experience this change of heart that leads to a change of life, a change of heart that leads to a, a change of, of the way they see the world. Lord, thank you that you have given us your son, Jesus, that you have given us the hope that we need. Lord, help us today, help us every day of our lives seekers after you, seekers after your heart. We look forward to the ways in which you'll be faithful to us. We pray this together.
not see you are my strength though my heart is weak you won't let go you take my place on this battlefield you go before you're my sword and shield I'm not alone you fight for me you always have you always have my victory is in your hands is in your hands the March 15th is actually a day of, of prayer that um, our, our president has um, designated, and I thought it would be good for us to uh, just close out our service with a, a time of prayer. So if you'd uh, join me in prayer, um, let's talk to God. Father God, uh, we come to you today. Again, you've reminded us of who you are. You reminded us of, of what you're capable of. You are our defense. You are our victory. We can be confident in you. We can even be fearless, Lord, because our fearless, fearlessness doesn't come from ourselves. It comes from our faith in Jesus. Lord, we, we confess uh, the uncertainty of our day and all the different things that we're 
we're dealing with all kinds of different emotions. Lord, it seems like we've, we've run the gamut this week as people in how we've responded to the, the, the things that we see around us. The Lord, for, for us as people of faith, we want our response to be one of care, and compassion, concern, a voice of hope. Uh, Lord, help us as, as people of faith to guard against those attitudes that frankly, aren't from you, or attitudes perhaps of, of uh, selfishness uh, for some, or attitudes of, of cynicism, maybe even for others' judgment. Lord, help us to be conduits of, of your hope in a world that is hungry for it, in a world that needs it right now. Lord, this today we pray for uh, our nation, and even beyond our nation, the world dealing with illness, um, COVID-19. We pray, Lord, for the leaders in all these different locations as they try to make sense of the situation. Uh, We pray for our our national, our state, our local leaders, that you would give them the wisdom that they need, that they would seek you for it in these times. We pray, Lord, for those who are sick. Uh, Lord, that uh, there would be in their hearts, peace that comes from you. Peace that comes from Jesus. We pray, Lord, that that you would grant healing. You are the God who heals. You've communicated that through your word. We've seen that in so many different ways in our own lives. So we entrust them to your care. We pray today for medical workers. We pray today for caregivers, uh, people who are uh, risking themselves, risking their own health for the sake of others. Pray, Lord, for those who today are feeling fearful or anxious. Lord, that you would introduce into their souls a calmness that comes from you. We pray, Lord, for us, that you give us opportunities to reach out to those in need. That we would share out of our abundance spiritually, relationally, physically. We pray that you'd use us as voices of hope and encouragement pray that you give us opportunities to point people to that hope in Jesus that we've experienced. And help us, Lord, to make the most of every opportunity, giving you the glory for all of it. Lord, we we are confident of your love for us. And we want to confess today our love for you. Our confidence in all that you are today and always. We pray all these things in the precious and powerful name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. We want to say thank you uh, for uh, joining us today. I know, again, this is a different environment for us, a different way of worshiping together, uh, but we're glad that that you've taken time to uh, be present with us. And uh, for those of you who'd like to, we would love for you to join in for our uh, experience for kids. Uh, Kids church in, in your PJs with uh, Pastor Paul. Uh, so that can be found on our Facebook page. Uh, you'll see a link there. Uh, Grace Kutztown's Facebook page, facebook.com slash Grace Kutztown. And uh, that starts at 11 a.m. You guys, take care. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And uh, we'll see you soon. God bless you.